Look, folks, I'm going to be real with you. This is probably the most stacked episode of This Week in Racing I have ever done. There are so many major stories in IndyCar, NASCAR, and sports cars. It's actually overwhelming. I've got a whole list of stories here, and I'm not going to do justice to virtually any of them because they're all so big. I mean, I'm telling you, in any other week, most of these things that I'm going to talk about would be headlining the video and many of them are going to get nary a mention. So if you feel like I need to expand my thoughts on any of these topics, let me know down in the comments section below because there's gonna be a whole lot of information in this video. Hopefully I get most of it right um, because I am a little bit upset uh, because we're essentially doing the Empire Strikes Back to la yesterday's video talking about the bump day uh, situation because we had yet another major team owner and a major member of IndyCar potentially coming out against Bump Day. So we've got a, so much stuff to talk about. It's unbelievable. So here we go, This Week in Racing. So this won't be the first mention of the Andretti family in today's video, but uh, they are running a throwback livery at this year's Indianapolis 500. Marco Andretti will be driving a replica of Mario Andretti's 1969 winner. That car took Mario and the Andretti family to their only Indy 500 win as drivers to date. USAC driver Chris Windham will drive in the Freedom 100 for Bellardi Bird Racing. The sponsor of his car is NOS Energy. He becomes the second uh, short track driver to race this year's Freedom 100. The other one was announced last week with uh, Andretti Autosport, the driver Jarrett Andretti. Fernando Alonso is rumored to be leaving the Toyota LMP1 program as a full-time driver at the end of this year's WEC Super Season at the 24 Hours of Le Mans. Alonso looks set to take the World Championship for Toyota, and of course he won Le Mans last year, so there's not a whole lot of uh, benefit to him sticking around. Uh, at Toyota, totally understandable. Uh, the speculation, of course, is going to be rampant from there on exactly what Fernando Alonso is going to be doing for his full-time job, if anything. The person who is rumored to be taking his seat at Toyota is uh, ex-Toro Rosso and Porsche LMP1 driver Brendan Hartley. Of course, he won Le Mans with Porsche in 2017, so obviously he is a great choice for Toyota moving forward. Confirmation of something we've known about and talked about on This Week in Racing uh, a couple of months ago, Ford has confirmed that it is the end of their factory Ford GT program in both the WEC as well as the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. That means if for the WEC Super Season, their time will end at, in June of this year at Le Mans. Uh, for the IMSA American Series, Ford's involvement will end at Petit Le Mans. Now, that being said, they are still going to continue or have plans to continue with privateer efforts with the GTLM or GTE Ford GT. And there's also the possibility that Ford will continue as a factory program in IMSA DPI with a brand new Multimatic prototype. NASCAR is rumored to be going back to single car qualifying. Apparently they've heard the calls from the fans and they've determined that this is going to be the best way forward. Uh, the only exception to this, again it's a rumor, but they will continue group qualifying on the road courses. So certainly that's going to be up for debate in the comments whether or not they've made the right decision. And finally, this is a footnote to a video I did earlier this week about NASCAR potentially testing uh, the Xfinity cars on the IMS road course. Well, a NASCAR employee apparently denied the claims on Reddit. So take of that or make of that what you will. I will point this out. Robin Miller has usually had pretty bang on NASCAR scoops in the past. In fact, Robin Miller was the person who broke that Winston was leaving the Cup Series in 2002. So uh, whether or not you want to trust NASCAR or Robin Miller, that's up to you. But my money is on Robin Miller and my money is on this test taking place. And now we get to one of our feature stories today, and this comes from our good pal Adam Stern. And he has been reporting for quite a few months now about the potential that ISC, International Speedway Corporation, could be sold, and the buyer is rumored to be NASCAR. Now, 
I'm not going to try to make sense of what you're seeing on the screen. I think that's way above my pay grade. If you understand it, great. If you don't understand it, uh, you're with me on this one. But what's important about this merger and what people seem to not understand, uh, because a lot of people are convinced that NASCAR owns ISC outright. So many people are confused why NASCAR and, and would be looking to buy ISC. A lot of people think they're two hands of the same body, which they are. The difference is ISC is a publicly traded company, while NASCAR, the organization itself, is a private organization. So what does it mean to be a public company? Well, that means you sell shares in your company to outside entities who are looking to invest into you. It's not just totally controlled by the France family, even though I believe NASCAR is the uh, the the major shareholder in ISC, and obviously that's why they're headquartered in Daytona and have obviously a very close relationship with NASCAR. But the question has been at this point: Why would NASCAR uh, be looking to buy out the private entities in ISC and bring ISC in under completely under the NASCAR uh, banner? And and it, by the way, the sale has been kind of struggling. A lot of the private entities that have been involved with ISC have not been particularly interested in selling to NASCAR or are selling their shares back into NASCAR because of what I'm about to tell you right now. The speculation around business circles, at least from what I have read, is that NASCAR is buying back all of their shares uh, that they've sold in ISC with the intention of merging the two companies together, uh, so having NASCAR and ISC become one company, whatever that would end up being called, uh, and then that would be done with the intention of selling the company, meaning selling NASCAR. We've heard these rumors before. Um, some people are liable to believe them, some people are not. Uh, I would say, again, NASCAR has denied this all, by the way. NASCAR has denied that anything, any of this has been happening, but there's been so many reports, and especially if Adam Stern uh, is talking about it, a lot of times that means it's probably happening. Uh, NASCAR's denial as well kind of uh, is definitely one that, that kind of look, makes me look and say, okay, it's probably happening. By the way, that's the same reason I think the IMS road course test is happening. Uh, why would NASCAR feel the need to respond directly to a rumor uh, if uh, that rumor didn't have a kernel of truth to it. You know, there's so many crazy rumors out there on the internet, uh, especially for a large corporation like NASCAR. Why would they need to respond to things that have no truth? So, and we've heard this NASCAR sale thing for years now. I mean, I think I even covered it in a video uh, probably six months ago. Uh, I believe the front runner at that time to buy NASCAR was NBC Comcast. Obviously, we know that uh, they have a major stake already in NASCAR. Are they still interested? Who knows? Certainly, though, uh, NASCAR purchasing ISC essentially back for their company uh, means a, bit, a great deal in terms of uh, their sale value. NASCAR as a corporation right now is essentially just, again, this is an oversimplification, so before you jump on me in the comments, essentially is just the racing series and not a whole lot else. When you start, uh, if, if NASCAR were to own a whole bunch of tracks or more tracks than they already do, they own a couple of road courses that they got in a, uh, a merger with uh, the American Le Mans series, but that's not important. Uh, if they bring in, you know, 10 or 12 tracks, I don't know how many exactly ISC owns at this point, that is a lot of real estate. And as we know, uh, real estate is incredibly, incredibly valuable uh, to any kind of a, a company that may be looking uh, to purchase, uh, make as big of a purchase as certainly an organization like NASCAR would command. I mean, we're talking billions of dollars here uh, if a sale were to go through. And certainly adding all that land into it. Uh, and in a lot of ways, a lot of the ISC tracks, because of course they were built at the kind of height of NASCAR, the land is fairly valuable for a lot of those tracks. So would it be a great thing for the sport for NASCAR to be bought by a, uh, a different entity, whether it was private or public? Maybe, maybe not. You could see it go like the Formula One route where you maybe have a lot of things that fans want start to come back uh, when you get out uh, the, the FOM Bernie Ecclestones of the world and you bring in a Liberty Media. Now, some people obviously don't like Liberty Media as much, 
or you could have a public organization buy it, uh, a la Disney buying Star Wars, and then you could see you know the changes that everybody hates amped up to a thousand. You never know. It's it's one of those two options, and there's not not a whole lot of other ones that that it could be. So this is a story that I really want more people to pay attention to because it could have major major implications for the business side of racing going forward. And speaking of major implications on the business side of racing going forward, we're going to do a follow-up to yesterday's video. And for this, I need to change my hat uh, because, uh, because of this. So add Michael Andretti to the list of owners that are opposed to Bump Day. They are in favor of what used to be known as the 25-8 and 8 rule, and they want full season entries locked in to the Indianapolis 500. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what to say about this one. Uh, there's definitely a lot of red alerts for me. Uh, definitely not good, not good um, for the chances of, of Bump Day surviving. Uh, and to make matters worse, and really, quite honestly, the biggest bombshell in this article is Michael Andretti claims that Jay Fry himself, the IndyCar competition president, uh, is with him, quote, unquote, uh, and so that means you not only have kind of the, th the three stages of hell uh, with Ganassi, Penske, and Andretti all for this, but you have somebody who is a major, major force in IndyCar as well behind it. Um, so, and I wouldn't be surprised at this point. I mean, they've all come from the Indy Star, so uh, I would assume that this is going to be a series, and um, there are going to be comments and quotes coming. I will guarantee you it probably is going to be Sam Schmidt next. Um, and then probably Bobby Rahal, maybe Dale Coyne, and then suddenly, you know, there will be no uh, no real power to oppose that at that point. Um, bump Day will be gone, uh, and, you know, it doesn't matter what the fans say, uh, because, you know, if you get all the team owners lined up, uh, I don't think IMS is going to tell them to take a hike. That being said, uh, it sounds like Mark Miles, who is the CEO of Holman Company, uh, is kind of the, the blocker right now. Um, now, Miles claims that Jay Fry is on his side. Michael Andretti claims that Fry is on his side. Um, I don't know which side to believe at this point. Uh, you, have, you have conflicting quotes on that one. Um, I don't know. Uh, Thanks to Mark Miles, um, I've definitely disagreed with him in the past, and I certainly have agreed with Jay Fry on a lot of things. Fry has kind of been the guy uh, that a lot of people point to as one of the driving forces behind IndyCar's revitalization, um, but he's definitely getting this one wrong if uh, what Michael Andretti says is true, and Mark Miles is, is certainly getting this one right. Um, and Michael in the article uh, had the audacity to claim that Bump Day will not be affected uh, at all by having uh, locked in starters, 25 and 8 or 4 uh, or 24 and 9, whatever it may end up being. And um, that's complete BS, complete BS. Um, and quite honestly, there's no reason to qualify anymore if, if there are locked in starters, because the only teams that are getting hurt at that point are the indie only teams or the one offs. And, you know, they bring sponsors to guys. Uh, so if if we're really talking about fairness here, if we really want fairness, uh, you do one of two options. You either let everybody that shows up, it doesn't matter if there's 60 cars that show up at Indianapolis, uh, you should let them all in the race, or maybe uh, maybe you do the Lamar thing and have it decided in a boardroom. You decide the, who the 33 teams are, and it's up to them to make it to the grid. And if you get 31, only 31 show up, that's the deal. Or you have a reserve list if you've got, you know, you do you completely copy Lamar. Because having a 24-car entry locked in and then having everybody else fight over the table scraps, being a bunch of plebs uh, who really quite, you know, shouldn't even be... You know, if they're just going to lock in the points cars, what's the point of even having one-offs anyway? Because the event is no longer special. They should get rid of the practice, uh, have one day of practice on Saturday, or have one day of practice on Friday, call that carb day, have qualifying on Saturday, and run the 500 on, on Sunday. Because there's no point in having a month-long process. There's no point in having all this pomp and circumstance. It does not matter anymore if the Indy 500 isn't the Indy 500. If it's just going to be another race, make it another race and get on with it. Or 
you can, you know, just continue having the Indy 500. Uh, I mean, that would kill it. I mean, it, it, and maybe this is what they want because, and I don't blame them either. And I don't want people to think that I have something personal against Michael or something personal against Chip or something personal against Roger. I mean, this is business. I understand why they're doing it. They're wrong. And it's going to be something that fractures the already completely fractured fan. I mean, there's no reason to piss all the fans off. What is the point of that? You know, and I get it. You know, you're trying to protect the sponsors. Without the sponsors, you don't go racing. But I would point out equally, without the fans, you don't go racing. So why on earth... Uh, they they're so desperate to pursue this that I don't get it. And again, they account between Penske, Ganassi, and Andretti. They account for half of the field. Uh, and the three of them coming together on this issue, especially if there is uh, the J. Fry support, I mean, it's over. I mean, it is going to happen, folks. Um, so get it while it lasts. I would say uh, we did have Mark Miles confirm on the Pit Lane Parley show uh, that he is going to or the. The 500 is going to continue this year, and he was very specific by saying this year, 2019, uh, as planned. So we get a bump day this year. 2020, bet it's gone. And it's um, it's a shame. Uh, I, I, I wish this rant could be as good as it was yesterday. I've actually had to record it twice um, because I got distracted the first time and I kind of lost my train of thought and, and didn't wasn't very co- coherent. So... It's probably gone, um, for sure. That uh, and I, I would love it. Um, and, I, and I mean, all these people, except for Roger on Twitter. So let them know. Be nice about it. Don't don't send them anything. Don't send them any personal insults or death threats or any of that crap. Because that just because once you start throwing insults, uh, you lose. You lose the argument uh, when you're the first guy to to start throwing the personal insults around. Because then you have no argument. So, you know, let them know in a civil manner that you don't want this um, and make sure to just, you know, share this video, share the one yesterday. I mean, if you haven't watched this, the the one yesterday, you really need to watch that video because I kind of explained where everything came from, uh, where we ended up getting to this point. But I don't know, man, this is, um, you know, I I don't want to be this angry in my own home. And a lot of people point out how much more passionate I was than the video yesterday. I, I try not to be too passionate. I realize that this is a uh, opinion show and it always has been. It's not, you know, super journalistic. But at the same time, I want to present things as objectively as I can. You know, my my opinions are my opinions, but I don't want to just go out of my way to be a fanboy. Uh, and um, yeah, I don't know. It, the <laughs> There's nothing else, else for me to say on this one. Uh, it's very disappointing. Uh, and the support from the fan base on this has been incredibly uh, positive to see because it seems like every tradition isn't sacred anymore, um, particularly in IndyCar racing. Uh, you know, you hear so much pessimism all the time, and things can't be the way they used to be. Uh, and this is one thing that finally people were willing to take a stand on. So it's nice to see it. I don't know if it's going to do a whole lot of good. I don't know if they really care what the fans think. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but, uh, yep. Yeah. How's this week in racing? Uh, ended on a downer note, but I'm sure you guys have a great lot, uh, a lot of comments down uh, already that I'm going to be reading and hopefully responding to at least a few of them. But uh, if yesterday's video is to judge off of, uh, this is going to be a pretty hot video. So, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Lane on YouTube. Subscribe for more motorsport content. And I will see you in the next video.